And you know, uh, there's a there, there's a very I don't eat meat or I don't eat flesh other than human flesh. And um, in Australia, from what I understand, there is a movement to stop the eating of cows because you know the cows contribute more to global warming through their farting and burping than than uh, all the cars and uh, pollution of man-made things. So and apparently there's a movement to eat uh, kangaroo because they do not uh, emit the methane when they um, fart or burp. I, I, th- I thought the kangaroo would kind of like, almost like the deer are here, you know, almost like borderline pest animal, you know? Well, uh, I believe there is a movement to farm them. The only problem is you need, I think, 10 kangaroo to equal one cow, but um, they, uh, they, they are um, pollution-free. Uh, I guess um, you know I honestly don't know because I'm uh, but I think that the, the 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 guy who owns the company I think he's a trauma fan and I think that you know I I you know I was in Australia a few years ago for a film festival and um, they had big lines and um, uh, people even though we hadn't hadn't been we haven't had any distribution there for a long time there were people who were very uh, you know, excited. Uh, uh, there was a retrospective uh, a, a month or two ago in Amsterdam at the Film Museum. The Film Museum is, uh, they usually show uh, Alain René, or, uh, you know, they don't show trauma movies, uh, that type of movie. But they did. They showed eight trauma movies, and I was there, and there was a line out into the street, and they people fighting over seats, and they raffled off. And they had to put in uh, extra tickets, and they raffled them off. And, and yet, we have no distribution in Europe. We have none. And, um, uh, the people want to see our movies, and I, I think the guy who runs uh, Jigsaw in Australia is, uh, uh, likes our movies and thinks uh, that if given a fair chance, if they can uh, get a bit of a push, uh, they will do well. Is there an issue with uh, getting distribution in Europe? I actually feel like uh, trauma movies, uh, like there's, there'd be a good market there. There is no distribution of trauma movies in Europe, absolutely none. And again, the, 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 the this uh, cartel pretty much runs the industry worldwide, uh, really... They're really, uh, and uh, you know, you, the the I, the only proof I can offer you is show me, show me other independent movie studios in any country that have uh, lasted a long time. You know, maybe in India. I don't know. I don't know the Indian market. I do know that uh, there's no such thing as copyright law there. You know, we don't have much of a chance anyway. But um, you know, I don't I don't know about every country, but I can tell you that. Uh, you know, show me some independent movies. Certainly in the United States, there are no independent movie studios that have existed for uh, anything close to 35 years. And it's not because they're making bad movies. They're making great movies. They're making movies that are better than Troma, but they cannot make a profit. They can't. They cannot feed themselves. They cannot make money off their art. Now, in me- in most countries, the United States, I think, is the only country that doesn't subsidize its local independent industry. Uh, it does subsidize the uh, giant uh, devil worshipping international media conglomerates with the tax with the tax structure and with the uh, the in inbred uh, lobbying and all that kind of stuff but um you know France and England and Australia and Canada and almost every country in the world uh, gives uh, grants and gives money to local uh, na- filmmaking not the United States and I'm not saying necessarily that it should, but uh, it also doesn't uh, have a, an atmosphere in which uh, the independent spirit can uh, can get a fair level playing field. How and many, I think uh, it's probably the same. My guess, it looks to me, based on what little I know, it looks to me that uh, most of the other countries are controlled by a small number of international media conglomerates based on what seems to be uh, available. But again, I'm no I'm no expert. I can only speak from my own spot and from the fact that you know there's a line out the door at the film museum in Amsterdam, and yet we have no distribution in in uh, in Europe. I mean, there's fan mail all over the world. People people are paying fifty dollars to to buy a ten dollar DVD. They're paying fifty dollars in shipping 
so they can see movies in in uh, in France. You know, they're buying our, off our website you know, and then paying huge amounts of shipping charges. Just it's ridiculous. But that's and, that, and that's, that's how it works. A way, that's certainly uh, thanks to the internet that that's possible. I mean, that's yeah. But why would? But, but think of think of the people. If someone's going to pay fifty dollars just uh, uh, on top of ten dollar uh, DVD. No, no, I'm, I'm uh, saying it's that, pathetic. That's good. You know, there's, how, there's only good one out of a hundred can afford that. You know, who's yeah. gonna who's gonna buy the DVD? I wouldn't. So that's why we're not we're not that opposed to people pirating our movies. Let them pirate it. At least they get to see it. I make my movies for people to see. I've yeah. been lucky, and I've been able to make a living and send my kids to uh, Harvard and all that kind of stuff. But I've been lucky. You know, I've just been very, very fortunate, and it's pure luck. But um, so, and I, I, but I, you know, I don't. I think that to some extent, piracy helps the independent artist because it gets his, her, or its work into the public consciousness. And that, that's what I meant with that. The internet, they, mm-hmm. a lot of these people, like the people in France that you mentioned, for example, uh, before the internet, they wouldn't maybe not even have known that you. Not a chance. Them. We'd be dead. Yeah. That's why the big boys. That's why the big white boys want to get rid of the Internet. They want to get rid of it. It's a danger to them because they may actually have to get up in the morning and do some thinking. They may actually have to get up in the morning and figure out how to make a movie that isn't uh, made by a committee, that just isn't a series of non-connected uh, three-dimensional explosions. They'll have to actually tell stories. They'll actually have to create something that makes people think. They don't want to do that. My God, what a horrible thing that would be. And how about the thousands and thousands of, at least in the California industry, uh, uh, suits who make uh, five hundred thousand to four million to ten million to fifty million uh, dollars a year for uh, being uh, yes men for doing nothing? And how about uh, the disgusting, uh, obscene salaries that uh, a small number of actors make, uh, while ninety nine percent of the world is living on a dollar a day? It's a disgusting, upside down Alice in Wonderland. Uh, uh, media world, and uh, it really uh, is a, a pity that, uh, and you know, that the public doesn't uh, get uh, what it deserves. How many films does Troma Entertainment make every year? Well, we only make one or two, uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, but we um, we distribute maybe one a month. We we release one a month. Um, mainly on home video, as you discerned. Uh, if I direct a movie, I, we can get it into uh, two or three hundred American cinemas and a few in Canada. But so you're talking that, about uh, uh, Troma actually buys independent films? Yeah, yeah. Most you? of we own a library of about 800 movies, and most I think we've made about a hundred of them. Or you know, we've we've produced or, or financed or directed about a hundred of those movies, but the rest have been movies that we've uh, bought. Uh, when we had money, we bought uh, libraries uh, of films from, from movie companies that couldn't survive. So well, we've got a big library of movies. We have a lot of uh, content. Uh, unfortunately, nobody's uh, buying it right now. But what, what kind of films are those? Are they in the vein of tra- uh, all the trauma <coughs> films? No, that's or, a good uh, question. No, they're all different kinds. Uh, children's films, action films, uh, horror films, comedies. Romance. Uh, we've got, those, we've uh, got every kind of movie. Are those on your uh, website too, on the Troma? Yeah, website? yeah. Some, most of them are. Yeah, most of them. There are probably three. If you go to the Troma store at uh, Troma dot com, uh, you get a pretty good cross section. I don't know if we're selling everything, but I'm sure we're selling about three hundred of them on on DVD. That's interesting. I didn't know that you did that either. Yeah, well, yeah. What, that's what you, uh, very important. Sure. What do you What do you look for in independent film to acquire? Uh, well, uh, another very good question. Uh, we try to find movies that are uh, one of a kind, that are truly unique. That uh, that that's so. Cannibal the Musical, for example, is a perfect example. Nobody would distribute that movie. That movie was uh, uh, was made by Trey Parker and Matt Stone. And right after Cannibal the Musical, they came up with uh, something called South Park. And uh, but nobody would nobody would touch Cannibal the Musical because it was singing and dancing and uh, a little bit of cannibalism and you know there was nothing objectionable in it. It's just that it was a one of a kind movie. It had it was yeah, like a, it's a musical. I saw that in uh, the Village a couple of years back. I was playing at uh, I think it was Village Cinema Theater. Could be. And the theater was packed and yeah. we were, the audience was laughing hysterically. In a way, it was. I mean, were the jokes tasteless? 
Yeah, of course they were. But you know what? Sometimes you want that. And well, I did that. You, you saw it on probably a midnight show or something. Uh, 